Good evening, brothers and sisters. I just wanted to come on here and show you a little study that I'm doing to show you that being deceived is not an excuse before the Lord. So we're going to go back to the beginning of Genesis 3, 13. This was after Eve was deceived by Satan. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow shalt bring forth children. Shall sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for th dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. As you can see here, not only was Eve cursed because she was deceived, so was the serpent who cursed her, who deceived her, as well as Adam who was deceived by the person who was deceived. So the deceiver and the deceived person were cursed, as well as the person who was taken in by the deceived person in this case Adam and I'm going to go to a story in Joshua I've talked about this before Joshua 9 22 this was when the Gibeonites tricked Joshua the command for Joshua was to take out all the inhabitants of the land and there were inhabitants in Gibeon who heard what Joshua had done so they worked and made themselves look like they had old clothing and old wine bottles and old shoes and old food. And they went to Joshua and told him that they were from a far country. You could see this in verse 6. And they said, make a, uh, make a leak with us. And Joshua didn't con consult the Lord on this. And he decided to make a leak with them. So if you go down here to verse 15, it said, And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live, even though his command was to get rid of all the inhabitants. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. And it came to pass at the end of three days after they made the league with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors and that they dwelt among them. And the children of Israel journeyed and came unto their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon and Shephira and Beeroth and kirjath Jerum. And the children of Israel smote them not, because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel, and all the congregation murmured against the princes. But the princes said unto all the congregation, We have sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. And this we will do to them. We will even let them live, lest wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swear unto them. And the princes said unto them, Let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation, as the princes had promised them. And Joshua called for them, and he spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have you beguiled us? They were deceived. Why have you deceived us? We are from a very far, we are ver very far from you when you dwell among us. Now therefore you are cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from being bondmen, and hewers of wood, and drawers of water for the house of God. And they told them why they deceived him. Why is this important? Because we read again in Second Samuel. I'm trying to remember the chapter here. I talked about this in my last video. But this was in Second Samuel when God sent a famine unto the land. And David inquired of the Lord, why is this famine upon us? And the Lord told David, this was long after Saul had died, the Lord told David it was because, here, this is in verse, uh, chapter 21. 
Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered and said, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. These were the same people that Joshua made the oath with. Even though he was deceived into making this oath, he was required to keep it. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. So David had to make amends for what Saul was doing. Even though Joshua was initially deceived, God kept him at his word. Look what happens in the end times. What does the Lord warn us about over and over again? Starting in Matthew. Chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. He says this over and over again in chapter 24. Why is this important? Because the deception would be in the last days. And what's going to happen in the last days with the deception is related to this abomination. Revelation 18.23 And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Revelation 19.20 And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, and wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. So as you can see, not only are the people who took the mark going to be in the lake of fire because they were deceived. I think this is in Revelation twenty fourteen. But also the people, here it is, Revelation 14, verse 11, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So just like in Genesis, not only was are the deceivers going to be thrown into the lake of fire, but those who were deceived directly into taking this, but if they also induced others to take it, those who were deceived by the people deceived are also going into the lake of fire if they too participated in this. So as you can see, God is not changing here. He's doing the same punishment that he did in Genesis because being deceived is not an excuse before God. Even though Eve was deceived, all of mankind was cursed because of her sin and because she was deceived. It is our responsibility to not be deceived. That's why Jesus warned, take heed that no man deceive you. Do not be deceived by anyone. So even if you believe that, well, if somebody didn't know that this was the mark, then God is going to be okay with that. This is not true because the Bible is clear that deception is not an excuse before God. So I just wanted to share this little study with you guys. Hope you all are having a nice evening and Shabbat in the Lord. Have a wonderful